any point, you can throw those bouncy balls at me um, uh, to try and keep me on my toes. So just to launch straight into it then, one day I woke up and decided to, uh, to kill something. This was a few years ago, I was about, uh, I, was, I was 23, uh, I didn't have a clue. I, didn't, I really didn't have a clue about how to go about it. I'd not been long in the city and I was uh, kind of exploring, 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 uh, finding out about the kind of uh, the landscape that I, that I was uh, living in. Um, so I started from a point of, <gasps> look away for a second. <laughs> Hey, hey, all right, I'm going I'm I'm to have to take this a bit more seriously. It, it, it's a good de device to avoid whimsy. So, uh, <laughs> so I was starting to get a feel for, for, um, for, the, for, for a certain area, for a bit of woodland. Starting to kind of find out when the best times were to go um, up there. Um, and I was regularly going... Um, in autumn time, and, and one day I was hiding, hiding in some cover, um, not yet with any complex camouflage. I think I was wearing a, a, a black trousers, uh, no, yeah, a black jumper and trousers. Um, and I wrote down an account of the first kill that I made. And importantly, it's the, the first and only written account that I made ever. This is, this is actually the second one. This, uh, this document here, but this is the first time that I've, um, I've uh, accounted for it and uh, kind of framed it in any kind of structured way. So I'm going to read now, so I'm going to try and read whilst not getting hit by Mount Seagull. Um, I've made a slingshot or catapult. I've been walking in the woods quietly and observing. It is late October, the trees still have some leaves. It's the end of chestnut season. I can hear rustling. I'm still and quiet. It continues. I make my way very slowly around a patch of brambles until I sight a large chestnut tree. Don't put it down. I can see you put it down. I'll drop my gun. Um, <laughs> I see a squirrel, and my movement sends it, sends it and another I'd seen up various trees. I move closer get in a position where my face is partially obscured by a tree and wait. I'm four to five meters from the chestnut and I can hear the squirrels in it. They come down very quickly. Seven to ten meters away, a squirrel sits eating out of range. There are two squirrels fighting, playing, cavorting and making amazing movements together, doing flips and spins I've never seen before. They look like they're having fun. In fact, this must be a fun time for them. Plenty of food, soft landings and mild weather, and I begin to doubt myself. I have large, chunky ammo, aggregate from under the bridge um, at the Cumberland Basin, with a ch future of choice picks from paths along the way. There is one squirrel close to me. It's eating, moving about a little. It's in range, but I need to get closer. I've been observing for 10 minutes. I didn't want to spoil the idyllic scene, I slowly edge forward. I get so far, then it takes notice of me. My adrenaline spikes. It darts and takes a position 10 centimeters up from the bottom of a tree. I'm close enough. The others haven't stopped playing. I draw back on the rubber. I don't want to over aim, so I don't hold too long. I release and the stone loops up and right and then comes back center and hits the tree just up into the right of the squirrel's head. I hear the other squirrels run. My target doesn't move a muscle. I've loaded a new stone, pulled back, and let go. There is an unusual and unpleasant sound, quite loud. My squirrel appears to come unstuck from the tree, slowly dropping off and rolling onto its back, its legs in the air. I could go on in detail um, about what happened next, but I won't, I think. And I'll come back to why uh, later. So, so I got lucky in that moment, that was that was lucky, uh, and, and it was well over a year before I, I, I killed anything else until I, I got another kill. Um, and that period was, was a time of, of real exploration and refinement, uh, and I regressed after that point, after that moment, back to, back to sticks and stones. Um, 
it was it was quite horrific that first that first kill. It really kind of sent me a little bit wild for, for 15 minutes. Didn't know where I was, what I'd done. Um, it, it was quite hard. It turned out it was it was impossible to catch any animals with a stone and stick. Um, I did try very hard for quite a long time, but this is the this is the kind of most effective one that I made. But the idea with this is um, you throw it like this. And it, oh, it rebounds. <laughs> you throw it like this, uh, and it and it spins. And the the um, the spin that it creates is uh, is the kind of killing force. So as it rotates, it generates an awful lot of an awful lot of energy, and uh, it really really hurts. It was still energy that came from my body. It was still metabolic energy rather than mechanical energy because I was throwing a stick like so. So I hadn't I hadn't quite succumbed to the to to making a mechanism for killing quite yet. So, yeah, as I said, it was about three kilometers to this place where I started going regularly. Um, uh, and once you get there, you can stay and kind of stalk slowly for maybe two, two or three kilometers and three kilometers home again. Um, and when I was trying really, really hard, um, I was going at, at dawn and at, at dusk. So you end up kind of traveling by foot, 18 or 21, 22 kilometers a day, which is a lot of kilometers to uh, to run, maybe run both times, and then and then walk around really slowly, which is quite demanding because you're kind of almost on tiptoes all the time, you know, and really alert. And the other things, if you're if you're if you're a bit sick, if you're not not on it, or if you're distracted, then you you can't you're just rubbish. You, you don't stand a chance of catching anything at all got to be really focused. And it's always when you think, oh no, it's, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get anything today. Then there's there's and put your put your catapult, your stick down or in your pocket. And then there's an animal animal there in a, a perfect target. It's always the way. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um, kind of show you what it took me to do that to in food stuffs every day. Twi hunting twice a day, probably a whole pot of yogurt. Um, about this, this many, this many beans, maybe about that many. I was eating a lot of butter beans at one point. I had a lot, lots of butter beans, a few onions. Uh, about so this is probably this is about uh, um, 30, 30, 30, I can't remember how many grams. That much rice. Um, I was quite disciplined with chocolate, but um, about 25 grams of chocolate. And I'd have a hot chocolate in the morning, and, and then a, a hot chocolate after siesta. Probably, well, to be honest, if I was going out twice in one day, then it would be mm, about three three quarters of a cheese, of a, of a three three twenty gram cheese, quite a lot of cheese, and um, and definitely more than that in butter, a lot of butter, okay, and then garlics, um, and also probably this much milk. Milk. That much milk, and also mm, probably four eggs. I expect four eggs, um, and then the problem is, of course, that uh, I failed from the outset. You know, look, look at all of that. <laughs> that that food is is obviously produced through mechanical means. You know, tractors and um, uh, lots of other things. So whilst I was kind of true to the, the idea that I could use my body, use this metabolic system to, that, that's on a par with that of the an, animal's metabolic kind of energy cycle, um, I kind of failed straight away. Um, but necessity, necessity drove that, drove the, uh, the more explicit failure with the, with the slingshot. You know, you, you're hungry, you've got to eat something. And if you don't want to buy meat from the shop for whatever reason, but it was my objective to 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 gather it for myself. So so ideology went out the window, and I made a I made a slingshot. Now I I have, I have drawn the line with um, traps. Like if I wanted to sustain myself um, without all of this, quite so much of this, you know, quite so much of of uh, um, you know, if you looked at the energy input into uh, into hunting and the energy and the from from that source of food and the energy input from hunted food, then the virtually, you know, it would just be, be ridiculous. A tiny, tiny percent, like, 
a tiny amount of energy from uh, rabbits and squirrels and pigeons and a huge amount of energy expended on hunting them. So it's, it's, not, it's not supportable, it's unsustainable, it's ridiculous, it doesn't work. Um, which is kind of sad. 